morning. Happy Resurrection Day. He is alive, amen? Awesome. We're so happy that you're here today. We want to welcome you. If you're watching online, we welcome all of you as well. A couple of brief announcements, and then we're going to get ready for worship. Uh, but coming up, so you know, next Sunday, uh, we're highlighting our Hilltop Christian Camp. And uh, Ryan Croft, our, the director out there, is going to be coming. He always brings us a wonderful message, but he also updates us on things, the new happenings at Hilltop Camp. And then in two weeks, uh, Ron is going to start a new series called Weeds in the Garden. And uh, there's so much going on in this world, and so many people, you know, have, uh, are dealing with social things, emotional things, just depression sometimes, and uh, just so many mental health issues. And his whole series is going to be uh, from a biblical standpoint, um, how do we live through those? How do we address them? And how do we just turn them over to God? So you won't want to miss that. That's going to start on April the 14th. So we are ready to worship this morning. I'm going to ask the worship team to go ahead and come up. Um, I wanted to share with you before we get started. I was listening this morning. Uh, C.C. Winans has a brand new song out, a new single. And these are the words from her song. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful and powerful. Who we talking about? That's my king. That's who we're here to praise today. Would you join me in prayer as we get ready to worship? Heavenly Father, what a glorious day, Lord. We're so thankful that your plan of salvation includes us and that you sent Jesus to die for us and be resurrected from the grave. And we celebrate that this morning, Lord. So may the things we say, may the things we sing, may the, th the things that we do all bring you blessings and give you glory, honor, and praise. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. after me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, Son of the living God, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Because of your faith in Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, my soul, 
Oh, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How can I keep it inside? Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. I'll praise because you're sovereign. Praise because you reign. Praise because you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise because you're faithful. Praise because you're true. Praise because there's nobody greater than you. Come on. Praise because you're sovereign. Praise because you reign. Praise because you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise because you're faithful. Praise because you're true. Praise because there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, whoa, my soul. Praise quiet my god is alive how can i keep it inside oh i won't be quiet my god is alive how can i keep it inside i won't be quiet my god is alive how can i keep it inside praise the lord oh my soul in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean come on sing it out and how marvelous how wonderful in my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden. He prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own dreams, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me he took my sins and my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Let's sing that chorus of that song again. Lift up your voice this morning. And singing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love. For me, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he. you 
life is worth the living just because he lived. Do you believe that this morning? Let's sing that again. Because he lives, I can't face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. On his last night with his disciples, before he was arrested and crucified, Jesus sat down to a meal with all of them. He took a loaf of bread and broke it into pieces and passed it around. From that point on, Jesus said they were to gather and break and share bread to remind them of how his body would be sacrificed for them. He also took a cup and passed it around. They all drank from it. He told them it represented his blood, which he would shed for them. They didn't understand what he meant until the next day when Joseph and Nicodemus took Jesus' bloody body off a cross and laid it in a grave. Three days later, Jesus rose from that grave, new, fresh, whole, and wonderfully alive, eternally free of ever again worrying about death or suffering. 
Jesus appeared to his followers many times in the next few weeks, showing them his risen body and promising the same for them and for us, eternally free. On this Easter Sunday, I would ask you to take some personal time during your communion and remember what this day means. The Son of Man was delivered into the hands of sinful men. He was crucified for all of us on a cross, a cross that they made Him carry. The next day He was placed in a tomb which was cut in stone, one in which no one had ever been laid. The tomb was sealed with a large stone. The stone has been rolled away. The grave is empty. Everything has been fulfilled. He has risen. He is alive. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. When we accept this life of the cross, we are able to say, I have been crucified with, cross, with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life we now live in the body we live by faith, in the Son of God who loved us and gave Himself for us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, on this Easter Sunday, we thank You for Your Son Jesus that rose from the grave and gave us a new beginning. And pray these things in His wonderful name. Amen. That stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who is resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son. chapter 28 verses 1 through 6 early on sunday morning as the midday was dawning mary magdalene and the other mary went out to visit the tomb suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the lord came down from heaven rolled aside the stone and sat on it his face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow the guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint 
Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. Thank you, Rayleigh, for reading that passage of Scripture. If you're visiting with us today and you don't realize what's going on, this is when the kids cannot wait to get out of the service and head down the, uh, head down the hallway to be with Lauren. She's got a lesson planned for them, do some Easter egg hunting and that sort of thing. But I appreciate Rayleigh sharing that passage of Scripture with us this morning. This is a passage of Scripture that we've read ourselves many, many times, we've We've heard it preached on year after year after year, and we've heard it so often and we've read it so often that it can become a little bit old hat for us maybe. We become so familiar with the resurrection story that we miss out on the miracle that took place a couple thousand years ago. Um, Heard a story about a a young lady. Um, She was in Sunday school on a particular Sunday morning. It It was an Easter Sunday morning, actually. Her name was Mackenzie. And she was trying to uh, listen to the, to, to the message that the teacher was giving. And she wasn't trying to start a theological debate with the teacher. She just wanted to make a point about Jesus' resurrection. And her Sunday school teacher tried to encourage the class that, that um, you can be assured that Jesus is everywhere. The teacher emphatically announced that there's no place where God isn't. But for Mackenzie, she struggled with that a little bit. She said, in her mind, this doesn't sound right. And so with supreme confidence, she raised her hand and she said, I know one place Jesus isn't. And the teacher curiously replied, really, where is that? And the bright little girl said, I can say with full confidence that he's not in the grave. Isn't that awesome coming from a young girl like that? Praise God that something to be said about childlike faith. Man, childlike faith that we see these two young... What a way to kick off a service. Two young people giving their lives to Christ, having that childlike faith and placing their trust in Him. It's a great reminder for us, this story and what we've seen here, that God's presence is with us today because the tomb was empty and the tomb is still empty and that changes everything, including us. There's no doubt that Jesus was dead. Some people try to explain it away and they say, well, Jesus really wasn't dead, that he was just uh, swooned, that he was just beaten up really bad. And so uh, they put him in the tomb and they thought he was dead, but he wasn't. And the coolness of the tomb after three days uh, brought him to his consciousness and he came out of the grave. Well, that's that's baloney because you try uh, being beaten like Jesus was beaten and hung on a cross for six hours, have a spear run through your side and just see if a couple days in a cold tomb is going to revive you. Pretty sure some of you folks in the medical profession today would say, probably not going to happen, right? right? Guards were placed by the tomb to ensure that whatever kind of following that Jesus had built up wasn't going to come in and sneak him out and steal his body. And they were hoping that... Uh, all of the people that Jesus had, had gotten to follow him, that they would just kind of fizzle out, they would just die out after they realized that their leader was dead. But then something happened. As Rayleigh read for us just a moment ago, there was a violent earthquake. The tomb was breached by an angel of the Lord. The guards were terrified by the appearance of the heavenly being, and their bodies went into shock. And this was the situation when the two women arrived on the scene of the tomb on that first Easter Sunday. They're greeted by an angel who's sitting on top of the stone, and the angel says, do not be afraid. Now, you think about that. I'm pretty sure I'd be a little shaken at the sight of an angel just kind of sitting on a, sitting on a stone and, and them saying, you know, do not be afraid. It's like, yeah, easier said than done. And then he told them, you're not going to find what you came here looking for because Jesus' body is not in the tomb anymore. He's not dead. He is alive. And the angel took him in, showed him the place where the body was, and it wasn't there anymore. He was nowhere to be found. And folks... This is where our hope lies. It's in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If he didn't raise from the grave, then he isn't God. 
He would have just been another important historical figure that gained a, a huge following and then died like every other person that's ever walked the face of the earth. But here's the deal. He came. He literally died. He literally came back to life. And as Kendall uh, pointed out uh, in the first service by the, the little ribbons that you, you get there, we know that, that, that uh, those symbols on, on that ribbon that you're going to get when you walk out of the church today, that, that he came, he died on the cross, he was laid in the tomb, he went back to his Father in heaven, and one day he's coming again. And the Bible says every eye will see, every knee's going to bow, that he is the Christ. And that's a game changer, guys. That's an absolute game changer to know that he is alive. And because he's alive, we can, we can have our lives changed. We don't have to live like we used to live. And here's what I want to point out to you. The first thing that I can think of about this story that, that we read just a moment ago is this. We can be changed because he defeated death in the grave. If he didn't defeat death in the grave, then there's not much hope for us to change. But because he did, we can change. And maybe some of you have come to church here this morning and, and you came in a very similar way that the two women went to the tomb on that particular uh, day when Jesus was laid in the tomb. Uh, maybe you have walked in here like them. You've come without hope. You, you, you just feel like maybe you don't have any joy in your life. Maybe you've come here today with the feeling that the future that you had longed for is never going to happen. The, the dreams that you had for a particular relationship isn't going to happen. That recovery that you're trying so hard to continue in is, 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 is troubling for you. And, and that provision that you thought that God would give you in your life doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Or that healing that you want for your life doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Or the outcome that, that you want to see happen in a certain situation isn't going to happen. But here's the deal. And you need need to remember this the tomb is empty our savior is risen and that discovery if you can come to that belief in your life you can be like those women on that first day when they came to the tomb and saw that he was alive it changes everything those two women that came it turned their world completely upside down they came in despair they left with joy they came with distress they left with excitement they came discouraged they left encouraged and the same can happen to you today if you put your faith and your hope and your trust in the death burial and resurrection of Jesus we talked about last Sunday morning that we're all just a little bit broken amen some of us we're broken a little bit more than others, but we're all broken to some degree. But there's hope for us in our brokenness because of the resurrection of Jesus. And I want to illustrate it with this, with this point, right? How many of you right now, just raise your hand, and we're at church, so, don't, so, so be truthful, okay? Uh, raise your hand. How many of you right now have a cracked cell phone with you? You dropped it, and you've cracked it. How many of you right now have a cracked one? How many, okay, let's do this. Keep them up. Keep them up. How many of you have ever done that? You've just dropped it, and you've cracked it. Keep them up there, all right? Now, how many of you have ever been out playing golf with your friend and your associate minister, and you dropped it, and they ran over it with a golf cart? Raise your hand. <laughs> just, just me and him. That happened, right? <laughs> if you've ever cracked the phone, uh, uh, the screen on your phone, I think all of us, we'd love to just be able to walk into the AT&T or the Verizon or T-Mobile, whatever you do, Walmart, wherever you go, you'd love to be able to just walk in and take the phone to them and say, hey, I've got a cracked screen, give me a new one, and they do it for free. Wouldn't that be nice if we had that kind of guarantee? Has that ever happened with anybody here? Probably not. It would be great to know if it worked that way, but it doesn't. What's the one thing in your life that you wish you could do that with, right? That one thing in your life that you wish you could have a new one if you could get it. Maybe it's a new, I, I don't know, maybe it's a new couch. You need a new couch, right? You need a new laptop. You need a new car. You need a new house. You need a new phone. I don't know what it is. Uh, here's what I want to do. I want everybody to just think for a moment. I'm, I'm going to ask you this question, and, and keep it to yourself right now. You'll have, a mo you'll have a chance to shout it out for me here in just a minute. What's the one thing, if you could, you would replace it with something new? If you could take the one thing in your life, get rid of it, replace it with something new, get that in your brain. Everybody got it? All right, on the count of three, I want you to shout it out loud, and I want everybody to participate with me here, okay? Shout out what it is you're thinking of. One, two, three. 
Did I hear husband over here somewhere? <laughs> Seriously? It seems, it, it seems like it came from this direction somewhere. Right? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Everybody, everybody's got something in their life. They wish they could just take this and get something new for it, right? And maybe some of you are sitting out there going, you know what, I made a mistake. And I do wish I had a different spouse. Yeah. Or maybe you'd say, I need a new job. Or I need a new, I don't know, maybe, a, maybe you need a new purpose in life. Maybe you need a new hope. Because you've been pretty discouraged lately. Maybe you need a new passion. Maybe some of you are just having a hard time getting out of bed of a morning because you feel like you got no reason to get up and go every day. Some of you might be sitting out there saying, I just need a whole new life. You see, that's what Easter is all about. That's what the resurrection is all about. It's us bringing ourselves, our broken selves, something that's old and broken and busted and dead and God giving us new. That, that's what it's about. As the evangelist Smith Wigglesworth once said, there is nothing impossible with God. All the impossibility is with us when we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief. Nothing is impossible with God. Do you believe that this morning? Then start living like it. I'm sure that the, when the women came to the tomb on that first Easter Sunday, they couldn't believe their eyes. But then when the angel spoke to them and said, Jesus is alive, I'm sure that their unbelief, it just melted into, into faith. And that meant that what was impossible for them now seems to become a reality. And now anything is possible. Easter is the time of year when the church gathers to remind itself that Jesus has risen. And because of that truth, there's this profound hope that things can change for us. No matter how bad things might seem, they can change for us. And here's the second truth that we need to understand. We are changed, we can be changed because of his mercy. The truth of the resurrection becomes a focal point for those who were the writers of the New Testament. When, when the Holy Spirit inspired apostles and other writers to, to write down uh, some things that became known as our, our New Testament, as our Bible, they, they all start writing about the impact of the resurrection on someone's life. And the apostle Peter, he opens his first letter, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. He says this, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with the great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. And so Peter is saying, guys, we've got reason, uh, we've got reason to celebrate that God saw us in our broken, sinful state and graciously offered Jesus, his son, by his mercy as a sacrifice for our sins. He sent Jesus to die for us. And then he didn't stay dead. He defeated sin. He defeated death when he rose from the grave three days later. And that's why I get a little upset when I saw this weekend that one mega church pastor decided that their church on this particular weekend was not going to talk about the cross. They weren't going to talk about blood. They weren't going to talk about the resurrection. Seriously? That's what it's all about. Jesus coming to die for us and conquering the grave. Well, we don't want to offend people. Well, the gospel is offensive. If it wasn't offensive, this place would be packed. Wait a minute. It is packed. Uh, but That's a cool thing. To have. It'd be packed every Sunday, multiple services. We'd have to build new buildings all over the world. But we like to slip into what's nice and easy and comfortable. And Peter's saying, listen, it's by the cross, it's by the resurrection that you have the hope that you have. And it changes everything. And Peter uses a term here to describe what we have because of Jesus. He uses the term new birth. And this is a common 
theme throughout all the Gospels to explain the way that God changes us by the resurrection. We literally become new. These two people that were baptized into Christ, the Bible says that when you're baptized into Christ, you are raised to new life. In other words, that thing that seems impossible is now possible because of the resurrection of Jesus. And you're given a brand new start. You're free from sin. You're pure. You're unblemished. You're like a newborn baby. Don't you wish that sometimes you could just go back? You'd like to go back. I mean, not like, I know a lot of times, oh, if you could go back to high school, would you do it? No. Uh, but but I, I would love to be able to go back to like when I was like itty bitty and really innocent and, and just being that innocent, pure little kid that, that, I, that I used to be, you know, before you made those mistakes or that mistake, that big mistake, before the aches and the pains and the ailments started. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about right now? Because face it, our bodies don't work like they used to. Amen? But the Bible says there's going to come a day when we're even going to leave those things behind. We're not going to have those ailments anymore. The other day, my wife and I, Stacy, we, uh, we were in the drive-thru at McDonald's and and uh, we were in her car, and this is important to remember for a little bit later in the story. We're in her car, and, and we place our order, and uh, we're sitting there waiting for, for our food, right? And I'm just sitting there, and it's taking a little longer than, you know, usual. And I'm being patient. I'm being real good. And, and I look down at the gas gauge, and the gas gauge said three-quarters of a tank on, on, on the gauge. And, and I said to Stacy, I said, now, you're going to think I'm crazy. You're going to think I'm losing my mind, but I don't remember stopping and getting gas in your car. She said, we're in the truck. <clears throat> and she didn't say, you idiot, but it was implied. Uh, I could read between the lines that I didn't even know what vehicle we were in, you know, and there's going to come a day. Anybody, can, am I the only one here that does that kind of dumb stuff? Okay, good. I feel like I should start a program just for us that are losing our minds. But the Bible says there's going to come a day when we're not going to have to worry about that kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to the day when I don't have to deal with that kind of ailment. I'm looking forward to the day when I can wake up in the morning and, and not have aches and pains and, and be able to walk like a normal person, not like this, just to get my clothes on, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, good, good. I just want to make sure. If it was just me, I was going to be a little concerned. But physical ailments are going to happen, guys. It's a part of life until God calls us home. But a spiritual restoration can happen right now. You might not get the physical restoration that you want, but a spiritual restoration can happen right here and right now. When Peter wanted his readers to understand what the living hope was because of the resurrection, he said it's like a new birth. We become pure. Not on anything that we do, but because of the mercy of God. We become innocent, not because of anything that we do, but because the mercy of God. Our sins are washed away because of the mercy of God. And not only are we made new, but we're also given an inheritance in heaven with God. And that changes our past, it changes our present, and it changes our future. And it's because of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you realize today that the empty tomb is for you? you realize that it is offered to you? Do you realize that you can experience new birth today? You can be changed by placing your faith in the risen Christ. When you confess Jesus is the Christ, you repent of your sins, you're baptized into him, you become new, the Bible says, by his mercy and his grace. That's why some people say that the baptistry is a tomb and a womb. It's a tomb where we die to sin. It's a womb where we are born into new life. Third thing is we can be changed if we change our hearts. And the reason that I, along with preachers all over the world today, are preaching about the empty tomb 
and about the mercy of God and what that means for us today is because we want to take this opportunity for people to experience a change of heart. We want people to understand that you can have this life as well if you surrender your life to him and repent of your sin. See, that's the thing that I think sometimes we miss out on in our world today. Everybody just do whatever you want to do. The grace of God's going to cover it, and you really don't have to worry about the sin because God is, is an all-loving and all-merciful God, and he's not going to send anyone to hell. That's all, that's all wonderful if his word didn't say something different. He said to everyone that he ever came into contact with who was living in sin, he said, you go and you leave your life of sin. Every single person that he confronted about their sin. Don't do it anymore. He said, you need to repent. And the proper response for you and I when we hear the gospel message, when we hear about the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross, we hear about the victorious resurrection of him from the grave, our response should be to repent. In the original Greek language, this basically means to have a change of heart, to turn around. You're walking one direction that's the wrong way. You turn around and you go the different direction that God is calling you to. And many of you might say, well, how do you do that? The Apostle Paul makes it very clear for us. Book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And according to the Apostle Paul and in other passages of Scripture, there's a process that you follow. You declare with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord of your life. This is a very important step. There's another popular belief out there that all roads just lead to heaven. Choose the one that just fits you. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right? Not me, but through him. I'm sorry, I was pointing to me. Through Jesus. That's how you get there. Okay? Very important step. And to say that Jesus is the Lord of your life is to say that he is in charge. He has complete lordship over your life. Jesus now has authority. In other words, he's at the helm. He is in control of your life. You are stepping aside, getting off of your own throne, and you're letting him be on the throne of your life. Secondly, you believe in your heart that, it's him, that the impossible became possible. That Jesus was raised from the dead. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in us. That's awesome when you stop and think about it. And then third, throughout all the New Testament, we see that those who believed in the Lord Jesus, who repented of their sins, were baptized into Christ. There's not one instance in the New Testament church, in the book of Acts, where someone gave their life to Christ and and didn't get baptized. Now, there is one passage of Scripture in, well, there's several, as the Gospels record them, a passage of Scripture of the thief on the cross that wasn't baptized. And people say, well, are you saying that, he, he, that he's, not, you know, he's not a believer because he wasn't baptized? I believe that the thief on the cross was under the same judgment as those who came before, through Abraham and Isaac and, and all the way back, uh, to them that, that, that uh, the thief on the cross was under that judgment because Jesus had not yet died. He'd not been laid in the tomb. He had not yet risen from the dead. And so the New Testament, the new covenant was ushered in after Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected. And so the thief on the cross died under the old covenant. But when we look at the book of Acts, every single conversion that took place in the book of Acts. A person confessed Jesus as the Lord. They turned away from their sins and they were baptized into him. And you're saved from the power of... of, In fact, baptism symbolizes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You die to yourself. You're laid in a watery grave and for a moment you don't breathe. You don't see anything. You don't hear anything. It's it's like you're dead and you've been buried and then you come up out of the water and you open your eyes and you can breathe again and you can hear again. It's as if you're resurrected. It's almost like Jesus knew what he was doing when he said baptism is something you should do because it's a very important 
symbol. It's a very important process to show our faith in Jesus. And you're saved from the power of death. You're saved from eternity without God. You're saved from the awful effects of sin on your life. Whenever you place your hope and your faith in Jesus, you literally become new. Don't you love that word, new? I mean, we, we, let me ask you a question. Would you rather have new stuff or used stuff, right? Everybody likes new, right? And the word new to us, is, it's, it's, a, it's a game changer to think that we don't have to be what we once were. It's a great word. And, and the book of Revelation talks about it a lot, our new life in heaven, the end of Revelation chapter 21. We come to this description where John says, here's what it's going to be like one day. He'll wipe every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. The old is gone. It's all new. Gone with hospital waiting room. Gone with tear-stained divorce paper. Gone with motionless ultrasounds. Gone with foreclosure notices. Gone with loneliness. Gone with abuse. Gone with cancer. Gone with Alzheimer's. It's all gone. Goodness, I'm even going to remember what kind of car I'm in if we're driving around heaven. I don't know. We might not even have cars. I would just float around and play harps. I don't know. We're not doing that. But I'm pretty sure we're not going to have, we're not going to have car. I don't know. Maybe we will. What kind of tires do you drive on gold? I need to stop right now, right? So, but that's why we celebrate Easter, because everything is new. Pray for me, will you? You say, all right, that's good news. That's great news. I'm excited about that one day. If I put my trust in Jesus, that one day everything will be new. There will be this new life in heaven that's really good one day. But what about right now? I know there's no tears one day, but what about right now? Because right now my heart is broken. No loneliness one day, that's awesome. That's fantastic, but right now you'd really like to be with someone. You'd really like to be married. You'd really like to have a family. No heartache, no suffering, no pain one day, really good. Let's just, let's just be honest, I'm in a lot of pain right now. You're excited about one day. It's just that you could use a lot of new right now. Imagine it this way. You get a phone call this week from an attorney who says, you have a long-lost relative that won the Powerball and $935 million. Boom! Jackpot. And this relative has decided that, that they're going to give every single one of his relatives $1 million just to get it out of the way up front, right? Just so that they're not like coming to me, you know, month after month after month, year after year, asking for I'm just going to get it out of the way all at once. Every living relative is going to get a $1 million. And so because you're a relative, you're going to get a $1 million. And immediately you just, oh, man, that's awesome. Because you think about all of the bills that you could pay off with a million dollars. You think about some of the stuff that you could have with a million dollars. And that pressure is going to be relieved because you have this hope that you're going to get a million dollars. But then the, ex the attorney explains to you that the relative didn't take the lump sum option. Instead, the relative took the annuity option, which means after taxes that your relative is going to get about $30 million a year for the next 26 years. And as a result of that, every year, he's just going to give one one of the relatives a million dollars each year and because you're somewhat of a distant relative you get your million dollars in year 23 you're still excited about that right you're thrilled i mean still you know 23 years from now i'm going to get a million dollars it's great news but it changes the way that you receive the news because you're thinking well you know it's nice right now to know that someday I'm going to be taken care of. Someday, there's not going to be this pressure that I have on paying bills and so on and so forth. And you're excited about it, but you hang up the phone, and there's bills that's got to be paid 
right now. And I'm just wondering if sometimes that's not how we feel. When we walk out of church, we walk out of the Easter service today and say, well, this is good, this is great, new life in heaven one day, but by the time I get to the car, by the time I get home, being overwhelmed with the stuff of life comes right back. What if I told you that the message of Easter is not new one day, but new can begin now? This is the way the Apostle Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. He says that he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. And then down in verse 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And so the promise of Easter, the promise of the gospel of Jesus Christ is not new life one day. It's new life right now. That doesn't mean that all your troubles are going to go away. It doesn't mean that all of your physical ailments are going to disappear. It means that a new life in Christ, a new spiritual journey begins right now. You can be changed. Your entire existence for eternity can change. And if you understand this, it changes everything. When we become a Christian, it's new life right now but we still live in an old world, right? This new life has begun, and so we have this new passion. We have this new purpose. We even have a different perspective. We have a new perspective on things, but we still live in this old world. And I was thinking about the one thing that the resurrection gives us that we really need. We need all of those other things. We need passion and purpose and perspective, but I was thinking about what, and we referred to it earlier, that the one thing that the resurrection really gives us that we need in this present world is power. Power to live for Jesus. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in us. And that helps you to navigate through this old world. That, that helps you as a new believer in Jesus navigate through this world. And we all need this. And if you're here today and you want to respond to his invitation to become a new person, we want to give you the chance to do that. Our worship team is going to come and we're going to offer a song of decision and maybe you're here today and, and you just want to be new. You're sick of living like you've been living. And you feel like you don't have any hope. You don't feel like you have any passion or purpose. Or your perspective has gotten off. And, or you feel powerless. Maybe you want to surrender your life to Jesus today. Maybe you want to be like these two young kids that were baptized into Christ at the beginning of our service. We had another one that was baptized Friday night. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, last week, I had the opportunity to... Uh, to go visit uh, Mark Baldwin's niece who was in the hospital dying. She wanted to talk to me about giving her life to Christ. And so I shared the gospel with her. She gave her life to Christ. We baptized her as best as we could in that particular situation. And uh, she lived just a few more days. I believe I'll see her in heaven. But I encourage you, don't wait until you're in that situation. You have the opportunity now to become new, to become whole, and to live forever. I'm going to ask you to stand with me, and as we play this song and sing this song for you, I'll be down, Kendall and I will both be down in the front here to meet with you if you have a decision that that you want to make for him today. Maybe you've already made the decision to, to give your life to Christ, but life's beat you up a little bit. And this world has made you feel not so new. 
Maybe you just need to recommit your life to serving Him. Get back to living for Him a little better than you're doing now. Maybe you've made the decision to follow Christ and you want to become a part of our church family. If you'd like to become a member of our church today, we'd love to welcome you into the fellowship. If you're a baptized believer in Jesus, we'd love to welcome you into into the church. Um, Whatever it is that the Lord might be dealing with you about, I pray that you just give it to him today. Let's pray. Father, I'm grateful for your great love. I'm grateful that that love was so strong. It is so strong. You were willing to send Jesus, your one and only son, to take the nails that we deserve. The beating that we deserve. The spear run through the side like we deserve. But you were willing to let your one and only son do that for us so that we could be made new. We're thankful and I pray that we never take that mercy and that grace for granted. We pray in Jesus' name. All my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do Every song must end, and you never do. Let's sing it out. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah I've got one response I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide I will worship you so I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again it's all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Because you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs 
get up and praise the Lord. So I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. Nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you have a seat for, yeah, praise God for sure. Have a seat for just a second. Um, I want to introduce someone to you. Linda, would you come on up here? This is Linda Oliphant. Linda's been worshiping with us uh, for several months now, and, and she said that during the invitation songs when her heart was just pounding, and she couldn't just sit there. She had to come this morning. She's, she's a longtime believer in Jesus. She's already been baptized, been living for him for quite a while, but she just feels like this needs to be her church home, and so she's come this morning uh, to place her, her membership here. So uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to just repeat after me, I believe, I believe that, Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Amen. Give him a praise this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. All right, what a great resurrection morning, huh? Hey, uh, a few announcements. First, since this is Easter, there are no youth uh, activities today. Um, so those will pick back up next week. And again, mark your calendars. We've got some stuff coming up. Next Sunday on the 7th, uh, we're having um, our executive director from Hilltop. Ryan is coming. He's going to present the word to us, but also tell us a little about Hilltop Camp. And then next Sunday... At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we're having a baby shower for Stephanie Imley, and it's down in Fellowship Hall. And along with the registry uh, that you can go to and, and, and uh, purchase gifts or whatever, uh, we're asking that you bring a baby book instead of a card. Okay, Instead of getting that card, bring a baby book that uh, they'll have to um, read as well. So that's next Sunday on the 7th. And then on, in two weeks, on April the 14th, Ron's beginning his new series of Weeds in the Garden. And we're really excited about it. So I hope you can join us for that uh, coming up as well. Okay, now here's one that you're going to want to know about. Saturday, April the 27th, 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We are so honored to be able to host Jason Crabb coming in for a concert. Many of you have heard the, the Crabb family for years and years. And Jason Crabb is uh, not only great in the southern gospel field, but in the contemporary field as well. And... Um, this place is going to be packed, and we're starting to sell tickets today, so if you want to get those tickets, they're $20 each, and uh, Ron will have some of those, and I'll have some of those out back. Um, also, there's a ladies' lunch coming up on May the 11th from 11 to 2. Uh, ladies will have lunch. They'll have, some, I think, some games and stuff, great fellowship. You get all that for $3, uh, so that's a deal, okay? A dollar per hour of fun. You can't get that anywhere else, so see the ladies if you want to... Uh, um, be involved in that as well. One, I, I've got a couple of gifts for you today, okay? One on the, not me, we have a couple of gifts for you. One of them on your way out today, uh, make sure that you receive, the guys are back there, get one of these Easter ribbons. We've been doing this for a couple of years now. We've got a, a person in our congregation that backs this and supports it financially so we can do this each Easter. And uh, the ribbons have Ron's message today, changed by the resurrection uh, but it also has the five symbols that you see around the building here every once in a while. It's an arrow coming down, the cross, uh, and, uh, an emblem for the tomb, an arrow going up, and then a dotted arrow coming back down. Those five symbols represent the gospel, the whole gospel. Uh, you can have those symbols and just share the entire gospel uh, with somebody. Jesus came down from heaven. He died on a cross, was buried in the tomb, was resurrected from the grave, and he's coming back again. The whole gospel. So make sure you pick one of those up. 
Yeah, and thank you, yeah, to our donor for that. And then, we don't want to leave these in here. This, this, is, a, this is a bargain, okay? It's kind of like the commercials, you know, Ronco for $19.95. But today, if you order today, you also get... Now, we have 10 Easter lilies up here that somebody needs to take home with them. All right? So if you want an Easter lily, they come up and grab one of them and take them home today. And we do hope that all 10 of them go uh, to somebody's home. So I am going to right now ask you to stand. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, please remember our prayer concerns that are listed. Uh, pray for them today. Pray for them all week. Just continue to bring them up. Uh, but we do want to lift up the family of Phyllis Baldwin uh, to keep them in your prayers as well. So add that to your prayer list for this week. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, what a great morning it has been. Um, what a story. <laughs> We're so thankful for your plan of salvation and that you allow that plan to include us. And Father, we are so grateful that that plan does change everything. Father, thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And we can start off fresh and anew through our salvation in our life, but each and every morning just coming to you and just giving our life to you and serving you. So thank you for who you are. Thank, for, thank you for what you do. Thank you for loving us the way you do. And as we leave this building now and go out, help us to share the gospel with those we come into contact with. We love you. We pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen.